foot forward with those two champions here. And this is going to be really exciting. The first Olaf of the year, uh, or of the split, I should say, for Blabber. Olaf had been, after the mini rework, very much so a top laner. It got a number of top lane nerfs. It's got some jungle buffs now. So now it is a viable jungler. And this is, I would say, Blabber's probably his best champion historically in the LCS. Yeah. He has an almost 83% win rate, 17 games played, a 7.4 KDA across his career. Blabber is known for running over games on... Summoner's Rift as our mid laners come face to face. Lots of eyes here on this matchup. Isaac, both of these guys have the power to put the game in their team's hands. Absolutely. It's going to be a really exciting one. As I said, incredible two games from both these players last week. The Takui gets it this time around. Uh, and when you think of, of Jensen, you know, I talked about historically, what would you say, you know, Blabber's best champ is? Most people will point to the Olaf. Uh, for, for Jensen, it's pretty much guaranteed to be his Orianna. 84 games played, 72.6% win rate. That is absurd. Yeah, fair enough. I think that's the same read that most people do have on this. You can see Philip is actually trying to zone Fudge off experience. If we could click on Fudge, we can see if he actually did get XP uh, for those waves. Um, but I think at least he might have missed one of the melee minions. So that's why Philip is playing so far past the wave. Interesting to see, though, Philip never uses Counter Strike. Just now is he using it. Uh, does get a nice little trade there. Uh, I'm going to go right back in with the fast two. Nice. So Fudge now chunked very, very low here. Does have one potion running, has one more to his name. Um, I'm not sure if he's playing Biscuits. I don't think that he is. Ooh, Ooh good, good trade, trade there, bottom lane too. FlyQuest getting advantages in both top and bottom lane by hitting that level two spike earlier and hitting it in a spot where they're able to use it, right? Like their opponents yep. are not already so far back that they can disengage that advantage. Good stuff from both Philip and Aphromoo there in the bottom lane setting up. Yeah, absolutely, you land that Dazzle. Uh, he does have Glacial Augment. Oh, too far there from Philip. Yeah, Couldn't take yeah. a power shot. And that's. That's a rough one, because now he's throwing away his trading that advantage. That ruins the whole thing. Jose is moving up, but now you just got to reset the wave, because look how low Philip is. Jose is going to be spotted. Blabber is in the area. I don't think that they can go for this dive whatsoever. No. Uh, and Fudge is going to try to hold the wave. He just has to walk forward into the brush now, and he's actually going to have, I think, the back range minions. 700 something. Now it's actually cutting away. Uh, but still, a good five, 600 gold at this point in time, with more minions left for them to farm. Nice little trade there from Takui on to oh, Jensen. Yeah. Um, stuff there. But most of it is, is really just on Blabber, right? Blabber has, is actually up three plus camps and took the dragon. So, you know, Poppy was more hovering around topside. Jose path top twice to try to look for dive angles. Didn't get anything from it. As a result, Blabber is just going to be way ahead of the curve of the game. Jensen stepping up here as Takui does not find the seismic shove onto him. And I mean, when Olaf has been popular and has been meta in the jungle before, his clear speeds have always been incredible. And mm -hmm. that's what you want to see these experienced Olaf players like Blabber doing is knowing exactly how much they can power farm and take the advantage oh. of that as Philip. Smacks Fudge around a little bit here with the top side. Blabber's coming around mid lane. They're going to try to dive top, though. That's, that's the more important thing here is they're actually going to look to dive. Fudge is trying to get away. He does not have any mist to protect him. There's your steadfast presence. Nicely done from Jose Viodo. And first blood goes over to Phil. That is massive. The third trip towards top lane there from Jose. Pays dividends big time. Jensen on the roam up towards top. We'll see what he can find here. Oh, a nice flash stun into the wall. Comes out from Jose Diodo, and now Phillips able to pursue him. Flashing over the wall. One more leap strike will be enough. Jensen gives him a freebie, and it's Jose Diodo delivering the punish. Now Blabber trying to see if he can pick somebody else up here. Sven's made the rotation as well. Jose Diodo and Phillip trying to get away from this. Blabber coming in, can't be disabled, but there comes the Jax Counter-Strike. Not enough just yet. Takui oh, jumps zoom. in. Takui's got no mana, but Blabber's got no life. Takui with a seismic shove to throw Sven back away, and he tries to get out, staying close to the terrain, oh. flashing out of the way, and the dredge line can't lollipop to hit him. Man, it's getting spicy in the top lane. Fudge, early laning was going well for him, but now... Wait. Flashing in a straight line, just barely getting out of the maximum range of the dredge line. Had to have a little bit of sweat on his forehead yeah. after that one oh came God. out. Oh, God. Look at the gold between Fudge and Philip. You see the FTX total gold. Fudge is down with the supports. Philip is on top of the game. Philip's on top of the world, baby. Philip taking over the game right now, but it's C9. Looking to take the Rift Herald. Sven's going to be eaten away from this one by Jose Diodo's ultimate. Rift Herald secured by C9 and by Blabber, who walks up. He's going to be slammed into the wall. They get the ultimate out. That's what they're going for here. Philip jumps in, but Jose Diodo's oh! going to die. They just turn it around. FlyQuest is free food, and Cloud9 just won the game. How many times have you seen Blabber do this on Olaf? 
The enemy team thinks they have him caught. They go in for Blabber, but Blabber knows the limits of his champion so damn well. Turns around on the Olaf. Fudge is not having a good game personally, but his team is doing great helping him out here as they're coming up top. We're going to make this happen again. Oriana Ball goes over the wall. They don't want to let Fudge die here. Takui coming up now, trying to help out the rest of FlyQuest. C9 disengaging when they see that it's a fair fight because Fudge is already half dead. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yes, C9 does kind of push them out of there, but now Jensen and them have to walk back, and they don't have vision here. This is awkward. It's going to be a 3v2. Blabber now spotting. Blabber goes in. He wants Takui. Talia can't He's got it. it. That's what I'm talking about. Talia cannot escape. Once the Viking has found his way in, it is Ragnarok, baby! FlyQuest heads for the hills, and Blabber is heading straight for the Wait, top of the scoreboard. He's gonna kill him too! Going underneath the turret for Jose, wow. and Jensen gets paid! Blabber is just going insane on the Olaf! Fifth pick, who cares about top lane? It's Blabber that is the counter here. Has the earlier Sunderer. Has the Herald full mid lane tower is going to be going down here. Who gave Blabber Olaf? That's a good question. He's going to get it this game. I don't think we're going to see it on him in a, for a while after this one is Cloud9. 5k up. 5k 12 minutes in when they were down, what, 1.5k or something purely off of top lane? Like this. I'm like bubblegum now, too. There is nothing on FlyQuest that can survive yeah. the deluge of damage that is this Olaf. And that is important because Fudge is not having a fun game. You know, I feel like we are just seeing this constantly. This top side of the map gets invaded. Philip slow stacks the top wave right as it's coming to the tower. Jose is up there like clockwork every single time. And now they actually even move up their top, their, their bot lane up towards top as well. They're trying to get Philip the solo gold on this turret here. They will do it. Okay, but Fudge getting stunned to the wall. FlyQuest coming in trying to make a play here, but Fudge wants to return the favor, pour some damage into him. The Terran ultimate is already out. C9, do they want to try to make anything else happen here? No, they don't. <laughs> Game state. <laughs> Fudge is just, hey, hey, he gets to put up his feet, recline yeah. his chair, yeah. hop in the back of the car, and just go drive down easy street. Exactly. It's Perfect a good time. It's prepping him, prepping him for the cast later on. Right, you know? yeah, we have Fudge later on today for game number three, and that's going to be awesome because he'll be able to tell us about how, how he hard carried. He was tweeting. We he's can about see if to he's mentally broken. He said he's about to 1v9 LCS broadcast today, <laughs> so he's putting all his eggs in that basket. He's yeah, chilling in the game yeah, here. Yeah. He's having a good time, man. Now, Blabber's the one having the best time. Absolutely. Blabber's the one who's just absolutely going to town in this game. Philip coming in from the side to look for Jensen. They're putting the CC together and going after him. The Cloud9 mid, Cloud mid laner just goes boom. But now Blabber's looking to get something back. He flashes in, but he can't do it. He's run out of the Ragnarok, and FlyQuest have found some crucial kill. Yeah, that is huge. FlyQuest is group five. Walk over, look to take a fight here. Jensen and Blabber, they are confident in any 2v2. They're probably confident in any 2v3 even. 2v4 though? 2v4, 2v5, I don't they know. do not have it. But they were not expecting everyone to show up like this for the scrap. And now FlyQuest getting some, uh, some room back in this game here, starting up the Herald. Three members of Cloud9 though in the area. Look at Philip though, he's coming out on the map looking for a flank angle here. I don't think Cloud9 can actually try to challenge. Now, the important thing here is, yes, this is awesome for FlyQuest. They desperately needed those kills. They desperately needed that. The guy wants this game. Like, they've been yeah, up really. there so much. Jose has made, like, five, six, seven trips up towards uh, top lane in that Krugs area. He knows his team is getting stuff on the other side of the map, so no need to go crazy. And they are already at three dragons. This is one of the powerful things about Olaf. One of the best at actually soloing up these early objectives. Takes it down very quick uh, top. Berserker pushes out mid. They are going to drop the Herald here, but it's just going to be for the charge. They're not actually going to try to stay around and, and cash out on the tower. Yep, Jensen and Sven both down here to protect this one. There comes your charge. Not quite enough to take the turret down, so no objective bounty money coming back in. The gold lead a Stop side. Anytime there's a wave that's going to be crashing, FlyQuest sends it up towards top, looking to zone Fudge off this tower. We'll see if they want to commit to the turret itself. There's only 50 seconds until Soul. Maybe FlyQuest is going to try to actually get something here and give it up. Oh, no. Oh, they go in for Fudge, but it doesn't turn into a whole lot just yet. FlyQuest, this one's not going where they want it to go. Afro move bringing down the ulti, but FlyQuest are still in a bit of a tough spot. C9 pouring the damage into the health bars as Blabber stays alive, tanking on the front line, but he's finally going to drop FlyQuest. Get two! FlyQuest! Oh, here comes two. Berserker! It's 3v3 here on the map. Penta and angle! Berserker! Penta! And killing everyone! There it is! Berserker gets the Penta! Berserker popping off! You could see it happening! He saw the angle! Tarek ultimate!
ultimate expires. He had held his ulti the whole time there. Pops it up. He's shredding through FlyQuest. Cloud9 knocks him down. They're going to get the soul as well here. Berserker going off in that fight. Penta kill Hex soul. The man's counting straight to victory. Let's see it again. They try to pull up the dodge here. But the Counter-Strike expired before the flash there from Philip. The mis-execution means Fudge just walks it out. Then Berserker over the wall here, you know, gets right in on Johnson. The Terracult lands, so he just waits it out. As soon as the Terracult expires, he pops the R over the wall, hitting multiple people here, and then just shredding through them. As they start to actually look to retreat, he has the E back up again. He has tons of stacks on the ulti. He hits multiple members here with the zap, then dashes back in with the E. So now he has the AoE activated again, shredding through the Terrac. Turns on to Johnson as soon as Dukui goes into the stasis, gets the Quadra, and has the damage to finish him off for the Penta. Jensen standing and watching, cheering on the team. Beautifully done. Whoa! Oh, ho, ho, ho. Jensen didn't even bother throwing out an auto attack. He was like, nope, this oh. is your moment, bro. 7,500 damage in that fight. And now C9's looking to go again. Blabber throws out the axe. He pops the ulti. He's trying to keep hitting the damage, but unfortunately, <laughs> that ult expires a lot faster than it used to. Four stopwatches on Cloud9. There's zero on the other side. So uh, it is really tough uh, when your opponents are this far ahead, you know, have the soul, have a 9,000 gold lead, have all these luxury items in there to boot. It would take perfection from FlyQuest, but really, I think it's just about loss mitigation. You just hope that Sivir yeah. can clear out these waves and that you can make this game go super, super long. 45 minute game with yeah. Sivir and Tarek late game team fighting Jack's five items. Exactly. Like, that's kind of Maybe it. something happens. Even then, it's going to be really, really tough, right? Because uh, Cloud9 does have good scaling of their own. Um, you know, Jack's though, on three items now, has the Frozen Heart, so now the CDR is really amped up. Uh, and those cooldowns start to get very, very short with CDR boots and that Frozen Heart. So, uh, Philip, you know, he's kind of he's kind of the hope, right? Like, he could yeah. still win a 1v1 for sure against Gwen. But the problem is Fudge doesn't need to risk anything. Anytime Fudge sees him, he's just going to walk away because he knows the rest of his team is just so much stronger than the four-man squad of FlyQuest. Right. And that's exactly what they're about to showcase here. Jose the Odo has to back up. C9 just going to burn this one down. Dredgeline doesn't hit Takui. Oh. However, the Zap does. 700. Yeah, that spells... Um, I don't have any broadcast appropriate words I can use. It's like a, another it's really Z champion. Strong. It's, it's basically it's really, Zoe. It's really strong. <laughs> anyway, they're just switching oh. the aggro over to mid. They don't have to stop. Their resources aren't really being taxed. They have plenty of health, plenty of mana. The Jax that you're talking about being the hope of FlyQuest, he's up there in the top side, coming back down towards mid lane now. This might be FlyQuest one shot at trying yeah. to make a play, but no, the turret is already down before Philip is able to make his way in there. I think C9 they're gonna go. He's make still looking. Number two. Here they go. Blabber gets hit by the seismic shove, and now Philip's coming in. He deploys the counter strike. He's going in for Jensen, but he's not able to find the damage. He dies before the ulti comes down. Fudge has made his way into the back, and FlyQuest are now trapped. Blabber is low HP. Fudge still looking for it. There's your zap. There's your crit. There's your hit. Goodbye, Johnson. Double kill back over to Fudge, and the man is sniffing him to pieces. Stunned up into the wall now, but C9 ain't done. Fudge is not afraid to die for the team. The minions are going to tank up the turret, so we won't even have to. Hosea the Yoda wants to come in there and try to grab some sort of a kill to do something, but it won't work. And C9 dismantles FlyQuest. Ah, uh, what an exciting game, man. Action start to finish in this one. Cloud9 stomping through FlyQuest. FlyQuest had the smart early game.